Thank you. Uh, my name is Tim Tang, or Hughes. Um, the banking industry is going through a period of fantastic change. An industry whose primary business model is based on the concept of asking consumers to routinely come to a branch to do their transactions and meet their needs, suddenly finds itself telling that consumer, please stay home, and instead do the transaction over a mobile phone. Now, while this may be extremely convenient for the consumer, and it may dramatically reduce the operational cost of the transactions, the question remains, what should the banks do with their branches? For many, the, the physical branch office represents a critical point of competitive differentiation. While customers no longer need to uh, visit the branch to cash their checks, the branch is still that physical foundation with the consumer's relationship with the bank, with the brand. Many consumers, even those who are not routine users of branches, will still cite the presence of a local branch in their neighborhood as the primary reason for choosing their bank. Money is one of a consumer's most personally sensitive assets. And customers today across all demographics still want the convenience and the confidence that comes with the option for local access, immediate access, to a local branch with a live community. As such, the role of the bank branch must transform from a site of just processing transactions <laughs> to one of an outstanding customer experience. As $30 trillion of baby boomer wealth begins to transfer to Gen X, Gen Y, the need for guidance on how to competently handle that wealth provides an excellent opportunity for the banks to develop a trusted relationship with their future generation of customers. However, effective customer engagement it's not just a matter of what to do, it's a matter of how you do it. Now, with regards to what, big data analytics can empower banks with incredible customer insights required to provide an extreme level of personalization. Banks with the right data will not only know when to offer a card away, at what rates to maximize profits, they'll know in which markets, which weeks, even during which special events to participate. In today's highly competitive market, banks can ill afford to leave money on the table. And the insights from big data analytics are only as good as the data garbage in, garbage out. To succeed, banks must revamp their loyalty programs to encourage customers to share more of their lives. New efforts in marketing are needed because so many of the customers are just unaware of the loyalty programs that are available. And the technology in the branch must be fully leveraged to learn as much as possible about the customer. Guest Wi-Fi is not only a core customer expectation, it's not just table space, it's also a powerful means for understanding consumer behavior in the branch. When a customer opts in, we have the ability to understand how often they are visiting the banks, how long they stay in the bank when they visit. We have the opportunity to see what kinds of content they are looking at while they're in our bank. Just all of this can be correlated to customer satisfaction. It's these kinds of insights that can help us optimize our staffing needs. It costs more money to put more people into a branch. Now the question is, how many people do we need to put, how low do we need to drive that wait time down before customer satisfaction is in, is, uh, begins to drop? Video analytics can be very powerful in assessing how customers are actually navigating the physical spaces of our banks. Realizing the full potential of a bank's business sales may literally be a, a simple matter of just rearranging the furniture to create a more conducive environment for the customer to, to, to meet the customer's need. Now, with regards to the how of customer engagement, this is where that integration of human behavior and technology become an art form. Technology in the branch today has all kinds of compelling forms of engagement. You have interactive kiosks, mobile apps, tablet-equipped uh, universal tellers, are just some of the solutions that are available today. Customer surveys are even suggesting that customers today are even willing to, to, to engage with chatbots. You know, these are apps which are smart enough to converse with customers uh, via text, and in some cases, even voice. It's a FAQ on steroids. So the question now becomes, what is that right blend of technology and humanity that provides the greatest sense of customer satisfaction that leaves the consumer wanting to come back to the branch for more? Perhaps the right place to start is with the people. The branch employees define the customer's experience in the branch. These frontline individuals, they're the difference between an outstanding, overwhelming experience that the consumer goes home and brags about to all of their friends on their social media page versus an experience 
that those same consumers on those same social channels will go home and vent all of their anger and frustration and irritation to as well. As newer generations of employees enter the branch workplace, the training needs to align with the video-based YouTube-like experiences that fill these employees' personal world. High-frequency exposure to short-form interactive video content is going to become the new norm employee training. In addition, user-generated content has been repeatedly shown to be far more effective than the corporate generated stuff. Simply put, employees learn best from other employees. Now, in addition to effective employee training, employee performance may be augmented dramatically with the proper tools. Technology has become an effective magnifier in an employee's ability to uh, meet a multitude of needs and customer needs. With the right apps on a tablet, entry-level tellers have repeatedly demonstrated the effective ability to address a wide range of customer needs. However, the challenge with technology lies in the ability to keep it working, keep it operational. A simple test and flagship location does not mean the solution will roll out successfully to hundreds, if not thousands, of locations. Basic issues such as how to connect all of the branches with adequate internet access can become major stumbling blocks. In a season where the physical bank branches are routinely now collaborating with cloud-based fintech companies to provide a more expanded portfolio of services, which, services which can only be provided over the internet. The bank branch's internet access has now become a critical success factor. We live in an age where customers at home continue to have access to 10 to 20 megabits all by themselves. Why do we expect them to be satisfied when they come into the branch? <coughs> To share access to a branch is only but maybe a few megabits of internet access. A few megabits that need to be shared with other customers. A few megabits that need to be shared with employees trying to teach customers how to use the bank's mobile app. A few megabits that need to be shared with fintech companies that need to provide more services. A few megabits that need to be shared with cost-saving applications like voice over IP to reduce the operational cost of the banks. A few megabits that need to support the frequent distribution of high-definition video content that is powering all these digital experiences in our bank branch of the future. And let's not also forget those same few megabits also need to support the, the routine employee video-based training that's going to prepare that frontline teller to become a very competent and effective universal banker. A few megabits is carrying the full burden of the branch's business. This is the new reality of today's market. Not just for banking, but for everything. I also have the privilege of studying other markets like retail and restaurant. You know, at one innovations conference, a leading brand shared that technology has become such an integral part of their business, they won't build a site without that doesn't have sufficient internet access. That's the reality of the problem, isn't it? One of the core ingredients to the branch of the future it's something that's really just not under your control. Now, while some may be able to invest tens of thousands of dollars in build-out costs, it's not a practical solution over hundreds or thousands of locations. Instead, a much more reasonable approach, or a realistic approach, is you buy as much capacity as you can afford, and then you simply become as smart as possible in how you use it. This is not a trivial task. At the heart of the problem is this idea of using consumer-grade internet connections to support enterprise-grade applications. So while that occasional voice hiccup in your voice over IP at home might be a little annoying, it's completely unacceptable when you have a branch employee speaking with a high-value customer. At home, the average user will wait six seconds, maybe, before they'll move on to another website. What makes you think that in a branch, there's any reason to believe that that same level of expectation doesn't apply. That same rule of thumb, <coughs> consumer behavior does not apply. Like so many things in life, the secret to understanding the problem lies in understanding the money. Bank branches routinely pay $400, $600 for only one and a half megabits of capacity. But what they want to pay is a lot less for half the amount, less than half the amount for 10 times the amount of capacity. The question is the money. Why is it that the, the consumer pays so little? The reason, simply, 
It's because the capacity keeps changing. Sometimes I get 25 megabits, sometimes I only get 5 megabits. The reason your loyalty applications, your mobile banking applications, your fintech applications, your voice over IP sometimes work in your branches and they sometimes don't is that same changing capacity. We often describe the internet as the information highway. It's a great analogy because they go, you know, if there's too much traffic, then we naturally understand that, hey, things are going to slow down. If there's an accident and lanes start to close, we know things are going to slow down. That's not quite right. There's one big difference when we think about the information highway. On the information highway, all the cars drive at the same speed. Everybody drives at 65 miles per hour, no matter what. And if there's not enough space, if there's too much volume, you don't just slow down. Everybody drives at 55. And if you can't fit, you get to start your journey all over again. This is the reason why the applications don't work. When there's not enough capacity, when the capacity keeps changing, you have to start all over again. So sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not. And this is the great frustration when we think about branch of the futures. As the internet continues to play, the greater and greater role that this is available. Its technology is also advanced. We have the ability today to monitor the traffic in real time and shape that traffic to what the internet can do. With the right solutions, we can provide enterprise-grade solutions to all the locations. You don't always control how much capacity is available to a branch locations, but you always control how you use that capacity that is available. Use is a proud sponsor of Future Branches Conference. The reason why we're here is we have a whole portfolio of employee training solutions from uh, in, uh, in video on demand, interactive business learning, and online uh, uh, training portals on too as well. For the consumer and the branch, we have a whole portfolio of uh, managed digital signage services that we provide. But most important, support this branch of the future, to support all the technology things that we are going to talk about for the next few days. We have the rocket science. We have the technology to get more, to enable branches everywhere to be able to support all these technology initiatives. Thank you very much.